this part of the tutorial, we're going to take the picture of this dog and install it as a background image on our app for our finger painting. In the original version of the app, there was a picture of a cat, but I'm not much of a cat person, so we're going to use this dog picture instead. This dog picture I have installed in my downloads folder on my PC, and what I want to do is I want to move it into the drawable folder under the resources folder. Now in some of the other apps in this course I've been lazy and have been putting all the pictures that we're using in the app inside this MipMap folder. It's easier to install MipMap pictures under Android Studio than it is to put it under Drawable. But for this app I want to at least show you one time the proper way to install a picture under Drawable. Now there's some kind of bug in this Android Studio 2.2 Preview 6 that I have which is not allowing me to show what pictures are currently installed under Drawable. So to get around that, I'm going to click on Drawable and I'm going to right click and I'm going to pick this Show on Explorer, this option right here, and that is going to bring up a folder. And you can see that the Drawable folder is right here. If I open that up, there's nothing in it at the moment. And I can just drag that picture of that dog right in here. Let me do that. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to just drag it. And you can see that now this dog picture is available under the drawable folder. Now ideally I should have five different versions of this dog picture with varying degrees of density that would allow the Android operating system to pick based on the size of the screen which dog picture to use but I'm going to be slightly lazy and just use this one picture for all the mobile devices regardless of how big the screens are. Getting back to the layout, we now want to install that dog picture in the center of our screen here as a drawing pad, but instead of using a traditional image view to display the picture, we're going to create a custom view so that will allow us to uh, finger paint on the dog picture. To do that, I'm going to first start off by creating a stub of a new Java class. So I'm going to click on the existing Java class main activity and I'm going to say new Java class and I'm going to call this the paint pot view and I'm going to inherit from a view class and you can see now that it's complaining that the constructors do not exist now since I'm going to be using this XML file to do the styling for my view class uh, I'm going to need to have a, a larger than expected number of constructors so I'm going to say create constructor and I'm going to pick the first three. If you do XML uh, styling, you're going to need to have the single argument, two argument, and three argument constructors available for your view. And now I've created those constructors and now I can go on with the business of installing that background image of the dog. We're going to place our custom view object right in the center of this screen below these colored buttons and above these control buttons. Why do we need a view object? Well, for this particular application, you can think of the view object as being a drawing pad with the picture of the dog in the background. Later on in this course, when we start building video games, we'll describe in much more detail different applications for the view class. But this is going to be a relatively simple application for us. We've already created the stub called Paint Pot View, and now we're going to tie that stub on to the XML file here. So I'm going to make a little room first by closing off this window and we're going to add our view class in addition uh, right after all these other widgets right over here and we're going to create a separate tab for that and we're going to put in here uh, paint pot view and you can see the type ahead from Android Studio gives us the full path name that we're going to need now every view has to have its layout width and height defined so we're going to put in here uh, match parent for both of these. Okay, I had some errors temporarily, but when I hit the build button on the project, they all seem to go away. So now let's have a look at this view. Uh, you can see that it's outlined here. Now we can already see one problem and that the view right now takes up the entire screen. So if we were to run with this right now it would overwhelm the buttons the buttons would end up behind the view so what we need to do is we need to bring this view down so that it doesn't encompass these buttons on the top and we need to bring it up over here so that it stays above these lower level buttons and to do that what we're going to do is we're going to put in some uh, some limitations on the layout of the view
And what I'm saying here is I want this view to start below the red button. So now you can see if I click on here, you can already see that this blue outline now, which used to be covering the entire screen, is now sitting below these buttons. I use the red button here, but I could have used any of these four buttons as my constraint. Similarly, I'm going to add another constraint uh, from above. Okay, and now you can see that this view is nicely shaped to be uh, not interfering with any of our buttons. Next, we want to add the picture of the dog, and we can do this in the XML file directly with just one additional line of code. So I've added this one line of code to add the dog as the background image. And now before we leave our XML file, let's establish an ID for this view so that we can access it from our Java code. With all the coding now done in the XML file, we're in a position to test our app. And we see that the background image is appearing. And if we were to continue to press the buttons, we see that they are continuing to work as we had outlined earlier. So now we're ready to start filling out our view class and get the finger painting operations started. Mm -hmm.